What's up guys, Coach here at the Lion's Den located in Colmar, PA. So if you're ever in the area, come check out the gym. In this video, we're gonna be talking about five technique uh, cues and pointers that are gonna help with the bench press. When it comes to the bench press, this is something I've had to put a lot of time and effort to, to get to where I'm at currently with the bench press. Now these numbers aren't anything outstanding or world-class, uh, but from starting from scratch, getting to about a 450 pound raw bench press, a 565 bench shirted press uh, with Dave Tate, you know, I've come a long way. So I just wanted to, to talk to you guys and give you guys some little things that can go a long way when it comes to just technical efficiency as well as potentially increasing how much weight you can lift. Side note, I am a high school uh, strength and conditioning coach. So a lot of these pointers are something that I can see that could benefit uh, some of the younger guys. So if you guys are on any of my team and watching this video, uh, hopefully this helps you. So let's get right to it. Quick plug before we get to the first tip. If you guys are looking to learn how to program your bench press, I made a very in-depth video that I'll link up right here, uh, which will complement this video really well. So check that out. So technique tip number one is gonna be keep your feet planted on the ground. I see this happen all the time where people are working up in weight or they're just doing a lot of reps, they start to get fatigued, and then they basically kick that leg out. Now the way I look at it is when you're rooted on the bench, okay, we need to keep all points of contact you know, down as much as possible. I look at it as an example of we're a table, okay, and if basically we lose, right, our foot comes up, we're losing a leg off of that table and we're losing stability and support. So our body kind of naturally goes to this fight or flight response where we think we're in trouble, we want to get out of the situation, so we try to lift our feet up and get out of there. However, we have to start training our body uh, to be able to push our feet into the ground, uh, maintaining as much contact on the ground as much as possible, as well as on the bench, okay? So that's our shoulders are locked down, okay, our head's on the bench, uh, we have our butt down on the bench, and then the feet. But the feet are a big one, so that's what I'm talking about. It. So when you're benching, don't let your feet kick up and out Keep them rooted in the ground, okay? Stay down on Mother Earth as much as possible uh, when we're lifting, and that's gonna be a, a valuable tip to start it off. All right, my second technical tip when it comes to the bench press is gonna be controlling the eccentric. All right, the eccentric is gonna be the lowering portion of the lift, uh, and the reason that we wanna control that, guys, is first of all, uh, we wanna control the bar path, okay? We wanna know exactly where the bar is coming down. The eccentric should always be slower uh, when it comes to strength training, then the concentric, okay? It's, it's allowing us to take that time to prep the movement properly. Uh, and on top of that, it's also making you super strong. If you can control a lot of weight down on the eccentric, you're getting a lot of gains, so don't neglect that. Often what I see is guys just bouncing the bar off their chest, and typically when that happens is we lose bar path, we lose our brace, we lose our stability, uh, and then we don't really know what's gonna happen on the way up. We kinda just you know, pray to the big guy upstairs and send it, uh, which isn't always the most optimal way of training. So the more you can get better reps controlling that eccentric, the better off you're gonna be when it comes to executing the lift. So technique tip number three, which is going to be keeping your head on the bench. Okay, I've made a whole video on this that I'll also link above, going into more in depth on why, but just to kind of paraphrase for this video, once again, we want to keep all points of contact down on the bench and with our body as much as possible, okay? So we talked about uh, the feet and tip number one, but number two is going to be your head. A lot of people, myself included, used to watch big time uh, geared or equipped lifters doing the bench, right, and they would lift their head up, or people who are famous in the industry with big benches, right, would lift their head up. So me, you know, wanting to emulate that, I started doing that, not knowing that I was actually taking away from my bench press because I was taking away a point of contact. So when we're taking away that point of contact, first of all, as we lift our head up, okay, our shoulders tend to round forward, our upper back starts to come off the bench more, and that's the opposite of what we want to do, okay? We really want to sit those shoulder blades back and into the bench, driving forces down, okay, right, rather than rounding everything forward and up, okay? So that's going to manipulate bar path, it's going to take away power and leg drive uh, from the bench press because we're not in sync with our whole body in that case. Uh, and it's just not going to be as efficient as possible, like we said with all the other tips. So keep your head pointed down, pin that head to the bench, uh, and you're going to be a lot better of a lifter. Now looking back, when I think about equipped lifting and done it myself, those shirts are so tight and there's so much tension that it actually, as the weight down, it kind of forces your head up a little bit. And that's why I think 
gear lifters raise their head or equip lifters raise their head when they're doing that. I could be wrong, but that was just my experience from the pressure and the tension of a shirt. It's, it's insane. Like if you have the chance to try it, I definitely would. Uh, just to feel what it feels like to be inside a bench shirt. It's a completely different experience. Uh, but that tension, that pressure is what tends to lean that head a little bit forward uh, in my, my experience. So uh, that's kind of background on that. Technique tip number four, and this one's a little bit nuanced. Uh, but it's going to be full range of motion. Now, what I mean by that, okay, for those of you that are looking for hypertrophy gains, you're looking to put on as much muscle size as possible, get a really good pump stimulus to the muscles that are involved with the bench press, we want to make sure that we're completing that full range of motion, meaning I'm going all the way down, I'm touching my chest, I'm coming all the way up to lockout, okay? What I see often, especially with younger guys, is one, they don't touch their chest on the bench press, or two, they don't finish the lockout. They're kind of in that uh, time under tension uh, concept here, where over time, what we're actually doing is we're, we're not finishing the, the lockout portion, which when you go to test, that could end up being a weak point because you haven't been practicing finishing the lockout. I've talked about this with other lifters that I collaborated with, some really strong power lifters who just kind of rep it out, partial reps, and then what they end up seeing is, when I ask them, hey, what's your weak point on the bench? Typically, it's the lockout strength. And that's because they don't practice that lockout enough. So make sure that we're getting that full range of motion and on the down and also the up. Now when it comes to strength specifics, okay, whether that's be a power lifter or just going for a one rep max bench, uh, obviously depending on the grip here, it's nuanced. So we know that having a wider grip is gonna be a smaller range of motion. Okay, it's gonna be somewhat easier if we practice it to get uh, that, that rep. So, there's two takes on it, okay? It really depends on where you're at, uh, but I still think even if you are going wider, still get the bar to touch your chest, still go for that lockout and get full range of motion for whatever that full range of motion means for your training style, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. If you have more questions down below, drop them, I'll be happy to answer. Last tip, technique tip number five, is going to be make sure your grip is even, all right? A lot of the guys, young guys that I work with, uh, and even some intermediate lifters just don't take enough time to make sure that their grip width is the same on both ends of the bar. So really easy rule of thumb guys is that we can just use the knurling marks on the bar for where our finger placement needs to be. Okay, it's a tactile feedback. You know my ring finger needs to go on the knurling or I need to go both thumb width away from the knurling line in the middle for whatever grip you're going for. But just that consistency is huge. Okay, the last thing you want is to go for a rep or a rep max uh, and have the bar uh, uneven, okay? Been there, done that, it's no fun, and you use a lot of energy to try to fix that or compensate on the way up. So just for you younger guys or guys who are just kind of getting into bench pressing, just take that time to set up, make sure your hands are even on the bar, and that's gonna go for a much uh, more efficient and easier press on the way. Okay guys, so if you made it to the end of the video, thank you very much. These tips were in no order, okay? So pick and choose which ones you think you can implement in your bench press and what can really help you excel in the bench press. I've also done a ton of programming videos, which I've linked throughout the video. Check those out. There's a lot more tip videos that go in deeper to certain tips we've talked about or ones we didn't talk about. So check those all out if you want to increase your bench press. I also have a ton of programs available on the app. Okay which is gonna be down below. Uh, we also have a la carte apps. So if you don't wanna to subscribe to the app, you can just buy the program, throw it into your training and increase that bench press. And on top of that, we have our Discord channel. Our Discord channel is growing steadily. It's a platform that I find best for building community. I answer a ton of questions in there. We have a great time, great group of people in there who are just all about learning to get better in strength sports and just as humans. Like we have channels that have to deal with mental health, we have media and gaming channels, like different stuff that is, goes beyond you know, just lifting, right? We just wanna be able to build that community and I would love to have you a part of it. So link down below for that as well. Uh, but as always, like, subscribe, give me your feedback, comment down below. Really appreciate you guys. Lots of cool content coming out, putting a lot of time and effort into this place. And as always, stay lean, mean, strength machine. Catch up with you guys next time. Peace.